Here's your Royal Rumble 2020 review. The WWE 2020 Royal Rumble is officially in the history books as the road to WrestleMania is truly underway. Even before the pay-per-view started, the kickoff show provided fans with plenty of action as Sheamus battled Shorty G in the first match of the night. After months away, the former world champion proved he hadn't lost a step, even busting Gable's ear open, which caused referee Jessica Carr to provide some medical assistance. Despite a valiant performance by Shorty G, though, a brogue kick out of nowhere signaled the end of the match, as Sheamus marked his return to the WWE with a huge win over his shorter opponent. In our first title match of the night, United States champion Andrade held his own against a very game Humberto Carrillo. And despite a few mistimed spots which saw El Idolo waiting for his opponent to keep up, Andrade got the win to retain the star-spangled strap. After R-Truth mistakenly believed he was about to enter the men's Royal Rumble match before the show had even started, and Booker T got a huge ovation from his hometown crowd, it was time for the main show to start, with a special appearance by none other than Stone Cold Steve Austin. After the Texas Rattlesnake welcomed the fans to the January tradition, it was time for the first match on the main card, as Roman Reigns battled King Corbin in a Falls Count Anywhere match. A physical match from the get-go, it wasn't long until the pair used weapons, as Corbin flattened the big dog with the steel steps, the ring bell, and even a table spot, but was unable to get the pin. Like so many Falls Count Anywhere encounters, much of the match relied on the pair traveling around the arena, though the combatants certainly traveled much further than the traditional Falls Count Anywhere in WWE, which usually barely passed the ramp. As the match continued, things quickly escalated when Rude and Ziggler emerged, only to be equalized by the Usos. An incredible dive from Jimmy helped bring the action back to Reigns and Corbin, as the pair battled all over Minute Maid Park before Reigns finished the King off with a spear on the dugout in this impressive opening contest. Following a touching tribute to Kobe Bryant, who sadly passed away earlier in the day, it was time for the first of two Royal Rumble matches as 30 women battled for a championship match at WrestleMania. With Alexa Bliss and NXT's Bianca Belair as the number one and two entrants, both women had a tall order in making it to the end, and the number three spot saw our first surprise entrant as mighty Molly Holly made her way to the ring. As the match continued to grow in numbers, it was ultimately Liv Morgan who got the first elimination, dispatching of her ex-lover Lana, though the Russian got her revenge by eliminating the former Riot Squad member. With the number 6 spot going to the recently signed Mercedes Martinez, the former Shimmer Women's Champion wasted no time in making an impact, though when Alexa Bliss sought to eliminate Mandy Rose, it was the sudden appearance of Otis who saved SmackDown's Golden Goddess. As more women entered the ring, the match saw very few eliminations in the opening half of the show, as stars like Mia Yim and Candice LeRae added some NXT flair to the women's Rumble match. Bianca Belair was able to score an impressive elimination by using Alexa to eliminate Cross, and the EST of NXT was the top star of the match, eliminating over half a dozen opponents to set a women's Rumble record. The match was one filled with individual spots, as when Otis tried to save Rose again by catching his peach, it was the falling DeVille who tipped scales, securing her partner's elimination as well as her own. After a series of eliminations, the match returned to Bel Air and Bliss as the only two in the ring, but the NXT star was able to eliminate the petite powerhouse to score her eighth elimination. Bel Air didn't have the ring by herself for long though, as number 17 saw the appearance of Charlotte Flair, while numbers 18 and 19 saw the returning Naomi as well as Beth Phoenix, who suffered a nasty cut to the back of her head that stained her blonde hair. After 33 minutes and 8 eliminations though, Bel Air's time came as she was eliminated by Flair. With Zelina Vega entering at the number 25 spot, the match started to slow down as the ring started to fill up once again, though when Natalya sent Naomi from the ring, the former SmackDown Women's Champion had her spot of the match, catching herself on the barricade, but took plenty of time before re-entering. Number 29 saw Santino Marella compete as Santina, but opted to flee the scene rather than face the Divas of Doom, while NXT's Shayna Baszler took the number 30 spot. Wasting no time, Baszler quickly eliminated everyone in her path, but when things boiled down to the Queen of Spades and the Queen of All Eras, Flair got the final elimination to earn her fifth title match at WrestleMania. 
A post-match interview with Flair saw some very audible boos from the crowd, but no amount of negativity will take this historic win away from the Queen. In our second women's division match of the night, SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley faced Lacey Evans, and from the start, the champ took every advantage, faking an injury to gain the momentum. In fact, the vast majority of the opening half of the match was all Bayley, as Evans very rarely got any momentum going, much to the dismay of her family at ringside. Some trash talking by Bayley to Evans' daughter Summer was the catalyst needed to help drive the former Marine into fighting back, but after a moonsault was countered by the former hugger, Bayley quickly got the pinfall victory to retain her title. One notable absence from the match, however, was Sasha Banks, who wasn't by Bayley's side or in the women's rumble match, as according to a report by Fightful Select, the boss's injury that kept her from fighting Evans on SmackDown is more serious than first thought. Even without the boss, Bayley was able to get the job done, as her attention will now turn to Charlotte, who could face her at WrestleMania 36. Up next, fans saw the Universal Championship on the line as Daniel Bryan faced The Fiend in the first strap match since Mark Henry and Sheamus battled at Extreme Rules 2013. Unlike prior strap matches, there was no way to win by touching all four corners, and Bryan quickly tried to get the early offense with a series of kicks. One thing fans quickly saw in this match is the fact that they could actually see the match, as the company wisely opted not to use the red lights on this occasion. A match with back and forth action, the contest once again saw the continuation of Wyatt's seeming invulnerability to pain, as the Universal Champion even begged for more offense by Bryan. Of course, the WWE's Yes Man was more than happy to oblige, and as Bryan continued to use the strap, it seemed like he had a chance of winning the Universal Gold. Ultimately, however, it was Wyatt's day, as after Bryan was worn down, The Fiend once again showed his invulnerable side, and before long, Wyatt retained the Universal title before disappearing in the darkness. While Bryan received a much-deserved standing ovation for what fans are considering the best Fiend match around, the Yes Man was left worse for wear, barely able to make it to the back as the Yes chant grew among the fans. In our penultimate contest of the night, we saw a rematch from last year's Royal Rumble pay-per-view as Becky Lynch faced Asuka for the man's Raw Women's Championship. With Kyrie Sane at ringside, Asuka was full of confidence going into the contest and scored the first near-fall of the match. A fast-paced match from the get-go, both women looked to score quick victories in the opening minutes before taking the action onto the outside. There, Asuka would be sent face first into the floor, but even a leg drop by the man in the ring couldn't keep the Empress down for long. It was certainly interesting that after such a fast-paced opening that the pair slowed the pace down later on, but the Japanese warrior utilized a barrage of kicks and strikes to get a near fall of her own. A back-and-forth match, the pair had an interesting spot when the challenger locked her in the Asuka lock, the same move that Becky tapped to last year, but this time the man was able to get to the ropes. After Lynch was potentially knocked out by the Kabuki Warrior, the man physically stopped the referee from ending the match, and was even shoved into the referee. In a unique finish, a swift kick to Asuka's stomach caused the Kabuki Warrior to send the green mist upwards, and after the man finally locked in to disarm her, the Japanese star had no choice but to tap out, ending the nightmare that has haunted Becky for the past 12 months. After a huge night of competition, it was time for the second Royal Rumble match of the night, and after Booker T joined the commentary team, Brock Lesnar kept his word and entered from the number one position. As reports emerged online of the Beast having an altercation with Matt Riddle backstage, the reigning WWE Champion was in a foul mood and took out his anger on Elias, who entered second. The former 24-7 champion certainly didn't help his chances by referring to Lesnar as a gorilla and Paul Heyman as his fat keeper, as the Beast leveled Elias with his guitar before eliminating him. This was the story for the first few participants, as Eric Rowan, John Morrison, and Robert Roode all suffered quick eliminations by the Beast. At entry number 6, Kofi Kingston came in with a score to settle with the Beast, and Rey Mysterio, who entered at number 7, marched to the ring with his own issues with the WWE Champion. In a Batman-themed attire, the Ultimate Underdog flew around the ring like the Caped Crusader, and with Big E joining the match, the three faces teamed to take it to Lesnar. Unfortunately, that meant very little in the grand scheme of things, as Lesnar was able to eliminate all three, ensuring Lesnar's seventh elimination of the night. 
Even a dozen uppercuts barely rocked the beast who eliminated Cesaro, and though Lesnar's old friend Shelton Benjamin would enter next, seemingly leading to a reunion of the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, the gold standard was quickly sent flying by Brock, ensuring the WWE Champion his ninth elimination. Both Shinsuke Nakamura and a returning MVP quickly became Lesnar's next victims, and though the new NXT North American champion Keith Lee gave Lesnar his first major competition in the match, even taking the Beast down, both he and Braun Strowman were sent flying, but as Ricochet entered at number 15, the fatigue was clearly setting in. As the number 16 entrant Drew McIntyre demanded a fist fight with the Beast, it, it was a low blow by Ricochet and a claymore by the Scotsman which finally eliminated Lesnar, who tied the record with 13 eliminations. Of course, this alliance was short-lived as McIntyre would eliminate Ricochet in quick fashion, and while staring daggers at the Beast, would also send the Miz over the top rope. With AJ Styles and Dolph Ziggler entering at 18 and 19 respectively, the match finally started to seem like a more traditional Royal Rumble, though when Styles looked to be a goner, the timely appearance of Carl Anderson saved the phenomenal one. Unquestionably, the biggest moment of the night and possibly the year came at the number 21 entrant, as after nearly nine years away, Edge returned to in-ring competition following his retirement in 2011. Spearing everything in sight, the Rated R Superstar would eliminate Styles, and though Matt Riddle would come in with a whirlwind of hype, he'd quickly be eliminated by King Corbin, who himself was sent flying by McIntyre. With the mid-card being used as fodder for Lesnar, the last few entrants was full of top stars, as Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, and Kevin Owens all appeared, followed by Aleister Black and Samoa Joe. Though Seth Rollins became the final entrant of the match, the Monday Night Messiah came flanked by Buddy Murphy and AOP. The quartet worked together to eliminate Aleister Black, Samoa Joe, and Kevin Owens. Unfortunately for Rollins, it would be Black, Owens, and Joe who would send AOP and Murphy packing, and after demolition by Reigns, McIntyre, Edge, and Orton, the Architect was eliminated, leading to the Final Four. Despite a rated RKO reunion in the match, it would be Edge that would eliminate Orton, but after the ultimate opportunist was eliminated by Reigns, McIntyre would eliminate the big dog, cashing in his shot at a world championship at WrestleMania. In conclusion, the 2020 Royal Rumble was truly a night that lived up to expectations. A show that is built on the premise that anything can happen, the two Royal Rumble matches delivered that in full. Special praise has to be given to the Hall of Fame married couple of Beth Phoenix and Edge, as the Glamazon fought through a nasty injury while Edge made his shocking return after nine years away. Whether this means there will be more matches in the Rated R Superstar's future is unclear, but what we do know is that for Charlotte Flair and Drew McIntyre, the road to WrestleMania will culminate with a World Championship match on the grandest stage of them all.